ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? All right, so today what I wanted to do was go through and continue my Python and GTK tutorial series. What we're going to be covering is actually a couple of things here, but they're going to be kind of relatively small, but kind of collectively will make a bigger topic. So uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, modifying the path edit uh, or edit path script that we did last time in the tree uh, tree view widget, and we're going to go with, going we're going to be um, adding a popover type, type of bubble thing where it gives you status messages of certain actions that you do, okay? And so we're going to be covering then the GTK label as well as the GTK popover widget. And in addition to that, for this particular uh, lesson, we're going to also be covering threading because to get what we want, it's going to require threading. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to kind of pop that open first and then also pop open the Glade. And so first things first, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to add a popover. So I'm going to go through to the search field here. I'm just going to type in pop and it's going to go through and give me the two options for popover. One is popover and the other is popover menu. Popover menu is more geared towards just, just that, menus, as well as... Um, uh, like more like yeah, like almost like a little more like dialogue interaction type situations. Whereas pop pop over can be more content oriented, where it's kind of maybe a picture or or input fields or something like that. Okay, so we're gonna go through and do the first one pop over, and as you'll see, we have uh, basically a standard collection of stuff here within the general tab on the right, and we're gonna first off just add the uh, I'm gonna say ID. And so we're just going to say uh, M-E-S-S, I cannot spell to save my life here, message widget. So we're just going to say message widget for this, okay, for the ID. And then you'll see, of course, the options. They'll, it's pretty scant and stark, but that's because the popover widget is pretty straightforward in terms of what you do and do not want to do with it. And so there's only so much that you got to do with it. So... Before we even kind of actually talk about these things, what I'm actually going to do is go here for this main window, and I'm going to click on the GTK box here, or excuse me, yeah, the GTK box, and I'm going to go through and add a number of pages to be uh, four. And from there, what I want to do is I'm going to shift everything down one, down one, or or p position it down one for each one here. So this viewport here, uh, where's the GTK box? This is the GTK box. Okay, so I'm going to move this one down, and we're going to do the this one here. That's not the one that I want. I want the scroll window, and we're going to position that down as well. And so now, basically, as you see, we are going through, and we have a kind of space above here. And this is going to make this going to be relevant to what we're going to do when we talk about the popover here. So with the popover, you'll see something that says relative to, and then below it, constraint, and then below it, top. And so we're going to actually kind of talk about constraint first, and that is when it's constrained, and, and really honestly, there's really only one option that I'm aware of at this point because I can't get the secondary option to work. But basically the constraint is how I guess it's drawn. My understanding was or thinking was that when you set the constraint to none and you try to draw the popover, what will happen is that it will actually draw the popover outside of the window as well. Okay, but when it's constrained to the window, it will solely draw popover when it's in the window. And so what I mean by that is if, if the popover has content that shifts over past the right area of the window, over or out of the window, then it'll be hidden. So it's basically like it's literally drawn to this window. It's, it, it cannot be drawn outside of this window. So it's like where my mouse is at, it cannot draw the popover in. Unless it's set to constraint none. That's what I thought anyway but that doesn't seem to be the case. So I normally leave constraint to be window because the none option just doesn't make things work properly. The relative to option there is now binding the popover to something in the window. And that is what we're gonna be, that is why we have left this top area here empty because we're gonna add something that the popover can widget or the popover widget can reference so that when we set the position, uh, to bottom it'll show so basically it's kind of going to show about basically i'm going to go through and kind of add things here and we'll talk about it as i do it here so i'm going to go through and add just basically a gtk separator to the top here okay and uh we're going to just leave it as is okay now when i say relative to the separator the popover now uses that separator as a reference point so when it says relative to, the popover is now relative to that separator. 
okay? And then we can set its position relative to that separator, i.e. above that separator, below that separator, to the left or right of that separator. You get the point, okay? So I'm going to set it to the bottom because, again, keeping in mind that when we have the constraint to be window, if it's above that constraint of the, uh, or the, if it's above that separator, you're not going to be able to see the popover because it's above the separator, which is already close to that window's border, right? So we want to have that position to be bottom. And that's really um, all that we want to talk about with the popover. I'm going to go through and modify the common and set its width to be 320 because uh, we want to make, make it, you know, relatively big. Okay. And that's it. Now what we're going to do is add the label because that's actually uh, one of the things that, you know, we need for this messaging type thing to work. And so the GTK label, and by the way, what happened? I do not know. So Z, control shift, shift Z. Okay, it's kind of gone wonky and decided to hide itself. I'm going to go Control S to save that, double click on it to reopen it again, and there we go. Okay. Okay, so now we have the label. And the label, it you know, you would think, okay, so the label we probably could do something like get text and set text and stuff like that. Uh, eh, wrong. The label actually has markup. And so to set our managed label, we use markup to to do things with the label, okay? So in this instance, we're gonna go through and I'm gonna set the text, to, actually, I'm gonna keep the label as is right now, but I wanna talk about the attributes because it's gonna be kind of relevant here when we talk about the markup, okay? In this instance, when we are gonna manage the markup of this label, we're gonna be doing it programmatically, okay? And so we're not going to really do too many attribute settings or anything like that. We're not really even going to have the label text there either because, again, we're going to be modifying it. But I do want to edit the attribute here for the scale, as you'll see right here. And I'm going to go through, control everything, and then do 2, enter, and that's going to set the scale to 2, which is going to just make the text bigger to see, okay? And then I just want to scroll over down here because, again, we're talking about attributes. Some of these attributes actually can be used in the markup, okay? So, for instance, foreground color, background color, and underlying color are things that you can use in the markup to, or, you know, as attributes in that markup to set certain things. So, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, but just keep that in mind so that you can use this as reference if ever you need to modify labels, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK, and... The other things are pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to go through and modify the uh, justification to be center so that the text is center aligned, okay? And then I'm just going to do control S to save everything and we are pretty much set. I'm going to clear out the label as well since we're not going to have anything there until we want it to do whatever, okay? Okay, so that pretty much covers the widgets and their settings and the glade side. Let's go ahead and talk about it from the code side. So. Again, this is the edit path program that we did. And to be fair, I have actually made some modifications or several modifications to this to make it simpler, better, and more correct. Put a, I put in some additional guards. I put some additional path logic. So this is going to be this is not strictly exactly what like what we did with the um, tree view widget, but it's similar enough. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do now is first off, going to get some references to the uh, uh, the two widgets that we added. And again, so the label, we have the message widget. So we're going to just take the message and we're going to do the label. We're going to have it, we're going to give it an idea of message, message label. Okay. And so I'm going to do just that. I'm going to say that control S to save it again. And then we're going to just do, I'm going to paste this in here just quickly so that we can kind of start working with these objects because we're pretty much done with Glade, but we may or may not need to come back to it depending on whether or not I forget something. So obviously I prefer not to forget something. And so, booyah. Okay, so we have these two. And I'm going to do, I'm going to basically, uh, and actually I'm trying to copy these two. I may need to do a specific order too. So let's do it that way, control C, and then highlight these two. And then these two. And I'm just going to, of course, obviously clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of these two labels. Actually, I might as well keep reference to them, so I'll control X them instead. Okay. So we now have the objects in refer for reference. And in fact, actually, as a side thing, I'm just going to go through. Uh, okay, I, I 
just copied an empty thing, but whatever, that's okay. To add an additional thing, I'm going to go through and take my notes here quickly, and I'm going to copy colors, certain colors that I want to use for the error, success, and failure. Okay, and so basically I'm just going to move these like so, and then clear this up like so, and then take these two, and you can see the values here if you want to use them for reference, but I'm just basically adding that to kind of go through and make this a little quicker. Okay, so... I'm going to use that, and now what we're going to do is basically we're going to have a method that each of the functions calls when something occurs, whether it be a success message, whether it be an error message, whether it be a stack trace message, okay? And so that's what we're going to do here. And so I'm going to go through and quite literally just go through and define two, two, uh, two functions, and I'm going to take this one as well, control C then, and literally just copy it, paste it. And, uh, and then from there, we're going to do display message. So uh, if I could just type, so D I S display message. I'm going to take that and I'm going to take that. I'm going to say hide. And we're going to change this to be timed because what we want to do is basically show the message and then hide it uh, after about three seconds. Okay. So we're going to change these out to be self as well. And then what I'm going to do is actually first talk about the message widget, which is the popover widget, because it's pretty straightforward. So to basically uh, show a popover widget, you basically just give it the command pop up. And to hide the, the popover widget, you give it the command pop down. And so I'm just going to do pop up here, parentheses, and then pop down, P-O-W-N, here, okay? And so that is going to go through and show or hide the little message popover window, okay? That's showing our text. And then, okay, so then we want to take this and we want to do this. And also, by the way, as as a type of reference here too, we need to have this called because we are going to be self dot v hide message timed. And so I'm going to comment this out for a bit just because we're not going to call that method immediately. And so yeah, okay. So we've got the widget. We can show it or hide it. And now we need to of course set the label. Okay. Now the display message actually is going to take two arguments. So one of them is going to be type, and the other is going to be text. Okay, and we could maybe just say message, but eh, whatever. Okay, and remember, since this is a label and labels use markup, what we want to do is we want to set the markup. Okay, so we do just that by doing set underscore M A R K U P, and then I'm going to say M A R K U P, take that, control C it, and make a variable out of it so that we can go through and do some stuff with it as well. So I'm going to type in here spam. I'm going to take this here and uh, this here. I'm just going to literally do that, that, slash, yep, forward slash. I'm going to just comment that out, T-E-X-T -E here, and then comment this out. And then we're going to give it the attribute, F-O-R-E-G-R-O-U-N-D, foreground equals, yeah, uh, single quote, double quote, plus... T-Y-P-E plus. So the type is going to be the color, i.e. success color, warning color, error color, that I actually set up again up over uh, here, okay? And, um, and then from there again, we're just going to basically be calling the display message here. So quite literally, we can pretty much begin setting this up so that we can display our messages. Now, hopefully we never get a uh, trace error message, but, you know, if we should, the only thing we're doing here is basically printing it uh, to the console, and then we're going to display it also to the, uh, uh, you know, to the user. So I'm going to just do just that. I'm going to take the type, so it's going to be self dot error because that, you know, we do the type first, and then I'm just going to give it the text and then give it the exclamation mark here and that's going to go through and call if ever an exception occurs and we can give it the message now the other one is going to be that when we write to the file successfully so c-u-c-c-e-s-s-f-u-l saved 
file. Okay, and then obviously this one is not going to be an error. It's going to be a success. So we're just going to do just that. I'm going to take it. And the other one that we wanted to do is add actually a message for the uh, add entry option here. So, so we'll do just that. We'll do else here and then here. Boom. Oop, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to do it like so. We can do it just like so. And uh, in this instance, warning for that. So we're not really going to see the warning color, but we can say, you know, whatever. So not, oop, not, a, not a directory. Okay, so warning, not a directory. So because, again, we have the OS path is directory. If it's not a directory, we want to display not a directory because that's what that's the text or the path that we're entering as the text. Okay. And so, okay, great, cool. Now. We want to, of course, uh, make this actually, you know, hide them. Well, first, what we'll do is actually just show how it's working without hiding the message. And so, I'm just going to do just that. We'll, we'll see if we first off also set it this set this up correctly too. So, I've already kind of t uh, tested this and run this a little bit. So, I'm going to go ahead and click on a plus option here. And when we don't have it auto hiding, you know, within the time frame, um, you know, it, it gives us this message, right? And so, like I said when it's modal, it means that if it loses focus, it'll hide. And just as you see right, saw right there, okay? But go ahead and click on save. It'll say successfully saved file, but it won't hide until we click it, okay? And so, um, you know, that that's one way you, you could have it doing it if you want. You could do a bunch of ways that you can manage this, but I'm going to basically handle it this way, okay? So now what I want to do is, of course, make it hide, okay? And so I'm going to do I'm going to do actually an import and preliminarily we're also going to do setup for the threading so I'm going to do threading and then comma time so threading is going to be for a threading aspect of this and time is what's going to give us the option to make a make this sleep okay so if I do time dot sleep okay I'm going to give it an argument of three seconds and in three seconds it's going to go and hide okay now. Uh, this obviously is not going to work the way we want it to work. And to show you, I'm just going to quite literally run it. If I click on this plus, you'll see that the plus is frozen and we see the message disappear very quickly. So basically, this is running and it's sleeping, but then it immediately goes and hides the thing. That's not what we want. So this comes into the topic about threading. What we want to do is actually set it up such that the hide message is in its own little thread and that then the thread itself sleeps, okay? Because all of this currently is in the primary main thread, okay? And it's also worth noting that with GTK, it's always in the primary thread, okay? So if you have a thread and you call a GTK action, such as showing a hiding, it can be a problem, and we will talk about solutions about that in a moment. Okay, but see, as you saw, you know, it doesn't it doesn't sleep properly uh, and doesn't display what we want properly. And so, what we want to do is put that into a separate thread, and then from there make it sleep that thread. Okay, as also by the way, this is not a kosher way of doing things to make the main thread sleep. That's not kosher. You really shouldn't do that. So, okay, so to do this, what I actually do is there's a really nice quick simple way to make threading easy or relatively easy in Python, relatively speaking. And that is to basically have the, uh, what is it called? What do they call? They're, um, they're like tag attributes or something like that. They're like uh, function attributes or function uh, structure things. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on what the term is, but basically it kind of wraps around the, it's, it's basically using the at symbol to wrap around the function or wrap the function and do all these magical things and whatever. I'm drawing a blank on the term, but anyway, so basically what we want to do is we're going to create a def, we'll do a new function, okay? And we're going to call this the threaded, T-H-R-E-A-D-E-D. -E so we're going to call this the uh, function threaded. So T-H-R-E-A-D-E-D, -E threaded. We're going to pass it a function, okay? And then def, we're going to do basically another uh, function here. And then we're going to call this W-R-A-P-P-E-R, wrapper. And then the wrapper, we're going to go through and we're going to have our uh, star, A-R-G-S, comma, star, star, K W A R G S and then threading. Okay, we're gonna do threading dot thread. Okay. And then dot thread is gonna take the three arguments. So in this instance it's gonna be target is gonna be fn function, comma, 
And then uh, args is going to be not an empty args, but args, comma, and then kwargs, and then k, or, uh, kw kwargs, okay? And then we need to start the thread. So we're just going to do start parentheses and boom. Now, after that, we need to return the wrapper. Okay? And this is beautiful. This is magical dark arts almost. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, from my understanding, basically what it does is it pulls the function in and then takes those function arguments and stuff like this and basically takes that target function and then in the other sub function, say it takes that function, makes it a thread out of it, takes the arguments from that function itself, and then from there starts the thread and then returns the thread back up to the other function if that makes any sense, right? So basically that's what's going on. And so this makes it such that then we can literally use, and I'm again, I'm drawing a blank on the term, but it's called the uh, at threaded, which basically it's the, uh, I, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called, but anyway, you basically set this to be at threaded, okay? And so uh, this will make it threaded. Now, like I said, uh, GTK is not thread safe. Again, it's it's it, it, it works. It, it it really only works properly in the main thread. So if I go ahead and I actually run this and I click on, for instance, plus. Uh, first and foremost, I may have actually done something incorrect here, but uh, let me see. What did I do here quickly and correctly? Um, K wargs. Oh, is not defined. Oops. So uh, K W A R G S. Okay, boom. Now, if we do this, if I do a plus, we may get this to function in such a way that it doesn't crash, but boom, okay. As you'll see, it goes and crashes. And the reason because is because effectively we are doing uh, GTK thread actions in a separate thread, or at least trying to and failing abysmally, which causes this to crash. So what do we do? Well, <laughs> luckily enough, at least in this already uh, situation here, we have the glib library. And glib library basically allows us to go through and, well, allows us to do a lot of things. But for this instance, what we want to do is, instead of having the GTK, uh, the, the GTK action here drop down be called in this separate thread. We want this thread to signal to the primary thread that drop down or pop down should happen. So that such that the primary thread is the actual action, is the actual actor of this action. Okay. So basically, I'm going to take glib and then do idle idle underscore add parentheses. And in this instance, I'm just going to pop this open, use some little maneuvering foo here to kind of quickly do this. Boom. Okay. So glib idle add. What this does is this signals back to the primary thread to add a to add this call. I, I guess I want to say on the stack. I think it could be the other one. It could be uh, not the stack. It could be the other one. But anyway, it tells the main thread that when you are free, run this command. Which means that then this command is not running in this separate thread, okay? Which then means that this is now being done in a thread safe such that your program does not randomly crash. Okay? So now when we run this, boom, I can click on plus, and it'll say, of course, not a directory. I can click on, sa I can click on save, and it'll say, you know, successfully saved file, and all that, okay? So, um... Yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, that's uh, that's how you go through and do threading. That is how you handle label as well as the uh, popover widget. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Please rate, subscribe, tell me what you think, and I will talk to you all later.